Hi, this is the first in a series of videos using Oracle Apex Application Express version 5. We will go through the steps to build a working prototype application based on a database in Oracle XE. There are other uh, versions of this series for earlier versions of Apex as well on YouTube. You can work along with the videos and do what is being shown in the videos by getting the scripts at the URL listed here. Be sure to use capital D because when it shows a capital D because the URL is case sensitive. Uh, as an alternative, if you'd rather have the scripts emailed to you, you can go to the web page shown on the second link and use the contact page to request the scripts. To begin with, I'm going to install Oracle XE, which I downloaded from Oracle's website, and I won't record this installation process, but I wanted to show you that I'm installing Oracle XE and will be using that in the uh, series of videos, in the tutorials. So during the installation, you come to a screen where it prompts you for the password for Sys and System, and as you enter those, be sure that you put that information somewhere secure so that you'll always know how to get in through these two top-level accounts. The installation of Oracle XE has finished and whenever you install Oracle, whether it's XE or 11G or 12C and earlier versions of Oracle, you have Apex and the interface to Oracle XE on your desktop or up on a server is going to be Apex. So let's go to that and take a look at it. And so this is the application and we have the, uh, if you have a locally installed desktop version, you're using it on your desktop, the URL is going to be the same as what I have here. When you enter in the URL 127.0.0.1 colon 8080 forward slash lowercase apex forward slash F question mark P equals 4950. That's all you need. The remaining colons and letters you do not need to get to the, the application page. And having seen this once, I won't come back to this because if I want to do things directly with the Oracle database, I'm going to use Oracle SQL Developer. And if I'm going to deal directly with Oracle Apex, I'm not going to use this limited interface here. So I just wanted to show you that once you have installed Oracle XE, this would be your initial interface. But the other tools provided from Oracle, such as SQL Developer and going directly to the Apex interface, is the best way to manage what you want to do in terms of the database and in terms of your application development. And I guess there's one more thing I should say here. Uh, this, this particular application, which was built in Apex, it's an Apex application. Um, when the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade from what's automatically installed with Oracle XE and go to Apex 5. And so this application itself won't be available without you going through the steps to export it and migrate it into the newer version of Apex. And I'm not going to go through that process. It, because I don't plan on using this application. So I just wanted to mention that once I get started, I won't be able to come back to this screen once I have Apex upgraded. The next thing I will do is I will begin the upgrade to Apex 5. I've downloaded Apex 5. It's a zipped file. And I'm going to right click on that and say extract all. And I'm not going to go where it wants to put it by default. I'm going to put it on the C drive uh, you'll have reasons for putting it wherever you want, but I would say keep the path short. Do it without spacing. And in my case, I'm going to simply have it as Oracle, or not Oracle, just Apex 5. And I've got the, actually I've got the Apex just with the English, not, not multiple languages. So I'm going to extract that, and it's going to take a few minutes because there are a lot of files. When the file has been unzipped, in my case, I have something here, Apex 5. It creates a subfolder, and then there's another Apex folder within that. 
with many other folders and files. And the next step, by the way, let me just say, I'm going to follow the steps as outlined in Oracle support. So you can Google Oracle Upgrade Apex and you'll get the steps here and I'll be following these. So I've unzipped the file and I will now go to the command window and launch SQL Plus and connect sys as sysdba. So I'm going to type in cmd and open up the command window and then I'm going to move to the root directory and then Apex 5. If you're in a Windows environment it's not going to be case sensitive. Uh, I actually need to go down if, and get down into the actual Apex folder. So this is a little longer than I would have liked when I did the unzip. But I'll go ahead and work with this. It's important that you be in this particular Apex folder so that when you try to run certain scripts uh, they're accessible because of the location and from which you launched SQL Plus. So I'm going to do SQL Plus forward slash no log and I'll try that again and put my S on that and then I'm going to type in connect sys as sysdba and then type in whatever your password is for the installation and now I'm in SQL Plus so what I want to do is come to step 4 and I can copy the code here come back to my command line right click and paste and then I'm going to run this and then I will pause the video because this is going to take many minutes so I've run the command I copied from step 4 and just as a point of reference that took about 20 minutes on my machine then the next step would be to load the images and so you copy this but you want to replace the apex underscore home with the directory you specified when you unzipped the file so I need to log back in to SQL Plus in as sys as sys dba and then I can copy in the command okay I uh, forgot to get this turned on I uh, went on to load the images and I'm putting that uh, logged back into SQL this would be step 5 but my path is c colon backslash I created a folder called Apex 5. It created another subfolder called Apex underscore 5.0.en, and that's actually what I want because when we enter in the command, we want to be in the immediately parent folder to the actual Apex, A P E X folder. So I'm running that, and it'll take a couple of minutes, nowhere near as long as the previous command. I wasn't watching the clock closely, but I would say that probably took, I don't know, three to five minutes. And now, if you go back to the instructions, so the next thing you want to do is change the password. And I'm still connected as sys in SQL, so I can simply paste this in and run it. And it's asking for the administrator username. The default is admin. I'm going to leave it that way. It's asking for an admin email. And I'm going to leave the default as admin. And then it asks for the password. And you do have to use a special character and a number. So I'm going to type that in here real quick. And so the password for administrator has been set. So the instructions now say that you could go to the local host and log in as admin. So let's try that. I'll bring up a tab. Let 
and I've got it typed in. Uh, they don't tell you exactly what that would be, but it's the 127.0.0.1.1. And hit enter. One twenty seven. So I paused the video because it was taking uh, several seconds, and then I get this issue, and so we'll address that here in just a second. But it's almost working, so I could be logging in uh, here. Uh, as administrator, but we need to address the the message that we saw there. So in looking at the documentation at Oracle, what I found was that we're going to need to configure the embedded PLSQL. So I'll, we'll go through that step here real quick. So I'm going to run the Apex EPG config file. I'll go back in as we've been doing and log back in as sysdba. I'm not going to do anything with step three. I'll be running this command here. So I'll pause the video while I get it connected. So I'm going to run apex underscore epg underscore config dot sql and I'll replace the generic syntax provided in this example where it says you want to use the base directory, but also there's the assumption that we put it in a folder uh, called temp. So I'm going to put the parent folder I created and then the folder that was generated automatically when I unzip the file because underneath that is where Apex is. And I will run that. So I have to estimate. I think that actually, even though there's very little output seen here, um, that probably ran at least five, maybe as long as ten minutes. If you get this wrong and you get an error message, uh, I've rerun this and made the adjustments for where I had the uh, Apex files unzipped, and it seems to work okay. So I've come back to the browser, and now I don't get the message I was getting earlier. And this is what you should see. You're logging in to internal as admin with your password. And then we're finally ready to get rolling with Apex. So this video has been longer than most of my videos will be. I'll cut them, I'll chunk them so that they're uh, shorter. But I wanted to get us started with getting everything installed. So I'll, po I'll wrap this up by logging in and you can see the initial page. And we're ready to get started with the tutorial.